how's it, how's it guys? So the other day, my little boy, he's out there in, in, the, in the playroom and he's got all his, his box of Lego and he's putting them all together and he's, he's talking to himself. You know what three and a half year olds are like. And he, he spends a half an hour building something and, and he comes through to the kitchen. He goes, Daddy, 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 look, 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 look what I've made. Right? And he holds it up to me, this, <laughs> this thing, right? And, and, and his, his face is so full of expectation. And I look at it and I go, wow, you know, Ash, that, that's awesome, man. I, I love, oh, it's so cool. You got all this other thing. And, and this got me thinking that he certainly created something from, you know, part of Lego bricks. And his first thought was to rush through and show me what he had made. He was so proud of what he had made that he wanted to share it with somebody. He wanted to share it with, with me, you know, his dad, and see my reaction. If I had sat there and gone, yeah, Ash, that's, um, doesn't really look like a car, does it now, right? Or I was just like, yeah, I can't be bothered right now, right? Then he would have felt hurt. I, I believe, I think, you know, anybody who's a parent probably can relate to that feeling. And it reminds me of us as creative people, you, me, everybody else who's watching us, we're all creative in, in some degree. And as much as we'd like to hide behind this aura of well if you don't like it I didn't make it for you so it doesn't really matter there is within all of us a nugget no matter how small of this need like in my little boy to be validated almost in in the, the, the creative thing that we have made certainly by by people whose opinions matter to us a few weeks ago Dave one of the viewers of the channel sent me an email talking about this he said look you know you you talk about oh well you're making something for yourself and i and i do believe first and foremost that ultimately you know at the very core of what we do as creative people you need to make creative things that are for yourself first and foremost and he said but you can't just lean on that as a crutch you can't just say that's a, a catch-all for when other people don't like it because we do we do all want in some small way some validation from people because when you create art, when you create something from nothing, it's not the same as creating a television remote in a factory, just an assembly line thing, because you know the person who put this together probably doesn't even care one iota about whether or not I think this is a rubbish remote or, you know. But you, you create something and it's got you in it. It is inherently born of your soul. It has you have birthed this thing. And as much as, you know, if you're a parent and somebody says, Well, I don't like your child. You sort of, you go, well, you, it's like you don't sit there and go, well, I didn't make him for you, <laughs> I made him for somebody else. You, you take offense, you get upset, or you get annoyed. And same as if somebody goes, oh, I really like your, your child, such a joy. You, you feel pride in, in these things. And that is like our art, the things that we create, is that, you know, we, we, we like it when people give us praise, and, and we get our backs up when people give us criticism or, or say negative things about it. And in Dave's email, he said, you know, look, okay, so well, maybe we, we never talk about this. Maybe nobody ever talks about how infuriating it is, the struggle, the internal turmoil that you feel when you are a creative person and you, you put something together that people go, I don't like it. How does that make you feel? He said, is it too hard? Is it too hard of a topic to talk about? This is the fourth iteration of this video, so maybe it is too hard a topic to talk about, but I wanted to give it a try anyway, because I, you know there are people, myself included, who struggle under this burden, this weight of being afraid to show exactly what we are capable of because we're worried about what other people will think about it. And, and sure, doing things for yourself is part of that, is, is part of building up that. But I hide behind, oh, my work's personal, so I don't really show it. Because deep down, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I, I'm worried that people won't like my photography. I'm worried that, you know, they won't like the photographs. And they will say something negative. And, and that's a hard thing to admit because, you know, there's so much pressure, I suppose, in, in the modern world for all of us to be positive, to never say that I'm, I have doubts. You know, everything should be great. 
Everything should be a picture perfect world where, you know, it's all a can do. But sometimes we need to address the fact that it's not always roses. It's not always great. There was a time when I probably didn't really care too much about what people thought about my photography. So when was that time when I didn't care about really what people thought? Well, it was probably when I was just a child, when I had my Spider-Man camera and all, you know, just, I just wanted Dad. Dad was the only person who I really wanted to like my photographs, much as my son just, you know, wants me to like his Lego work. But obviously, as we get older, we start to build up a picture of, of people who we want to please with our photography. And we allow little things to gain foothold, pernicious little things to, to eat into us. There's a, a scenario that happened to me when I was a student and I did some headshot work for some actors at the theatre that I worked at. And, you know, they I would deliver the photographs and they paid me the money and, and you know, so, oh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, they're all pretty cool. You know, so very good. And then later on, later on in the bar after the show, they didn't know I could hear them, but they were talking about my photographs and they were saying that. And that has stuck with me. That has stuck like an albatross around my neck for the 30 odd years that I have, that have passed since I heard that. And at the back of my mind, every time when I take a photograph or I show somebody a photograph, I hear those voices. I hear them saying that, oh, they're going to say to my face, it's all cool. They're going to say, oh, we really like what we do. But really, they're going to go off and they're going to say, you know, your work sucks. And, and, and that's why I'm afraid. I'm afraid of showing lots of my work because as much as there could be many people who would go, I, I, hey, I like what you do, right? I'm afraid for that one person who goes, oh, I don't like it. So why? Why are we, why are you, why is everybody else who watches this so focused on hanging on to these criticisms? Baz Luhrmann said in his famous song, Sunscreen, which I'm a big fan of, that we should learn to remember the compliments and, and learn to let go the, the criticism. And then, of course, he says, if you find out how to do this, let me know how. And I think that there is ways that we can not necessarily stop us worrying about criticism, but mitigate its effect on us, mitigate its debilitating effects on us as, as creative people. And that is to, to make, make a big deal about compliments that we do get. Don't just dismiss things because it's like, well, what is, you know, if your wife or your partner or someone says, I really like that photograph, don't dismiss it out of hand because, well, they're not artistic, so what would they know kind of thing, which is, which is I, I tend to lean towards these things that, that while it's nice to get the compliment initially, I will then sit and overanalyze those compliments and think, Oh, well, yeah, but they don't really know, you know. And then I sort of think that those, those, them, them, those, those, those fake people in the background, not physically fake people, but, you know, the voices in your head that start saying, oh, well, but you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, what have you. And you think, well, if they saw the photograph, they, would, they wouldn't like it, they would pick it apart. And so rather than holding on to those compliments that come from people who have no reason to blow smoke up your backside we dismiss them and conversely we hold on to those people in the bar 30 years ago who said my work was, was rubbish I hold on to the person who 10 years ago in my studio sat and and I thought was gonna punch me he was so <laughs> so anti about the, the you know the, the photographs that I created um, not from a visual point of view I have, to, I have to say more from a financial aspect but still all of these things hurt because I took them as personal slights I took them as personal attacks on me and and so we need to do two things you need to kind of first of all you know remember the compliments and the best way to, to do this is to first of all you know if you are able to print them out or screenshot them or whatever is keep them Keep them. I used to put up all the, 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 the positive reviews that I got, and they were overwhelmingly positive, from my studio and, and put them up on the, on the wall behind me. 
to put them up on the yeah, on the screen on on the, on the wall behind my screen, so that, that when there were days, and there are lots of days when you kind of go, oh, I, I I don't know if I'm any good at this. I'm I'm down to myself. People don't seem to like what I do, so it makes me feel like a failure as a person. You can look at these phase, you know, these, these words and remember that there are people who do like what you do. That we should be proud of the fact that we created something that other people liked and convert, you know, diversity. If you if you have these criticisms, if you have these these voices of people who say, I don't like what you do, if it's a valid criticism, then you go, Well, okay, thank you, I'll take your take your message on board. If it's somebody who just goes, Do you know what, you've taken a picture of a bear and I don't like bears, so therefore your picture is rubbish, then you know, okay, fine, leave it out. There was a comment on a video recently, the Irvin, one of the Urban Pen videos, which I'll link to in the description, that says, I've got this for art and it sucks. Now, does that mean that he's been shown this video for his art class and the video sucks? which would be kind of, that was my first reaction. Or does he mean that he is now having to learn about Urban Pen for an art class, and he thinks Urban Pen's work sucks, in which case I, I think if Urban Pen was still alive, he, he probably wouldn't mind so much, but who knows, right? Or maybe he would. See, this is who knows, right? So you can see how you can interpret these these things in so many different ways. So, but but ultimately, see what I did there. We spent ten seconds talking about a positive comment, and now thirty seconds or so talking about how to deal with negative comments and over analyzing what the person has said. So if the comment is not constructive, if it's not whatever, then just go okay, fine. Put we'll put it in file thirteen and 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 have done with it. And if you know how to do that, then yeah, let me, let me know. Being a creative person, putting yourself out there, is an act of bravery. And I've been guilty of the past of being, chicken's not the wrong word, but you know, but not being brave enough to, to grasp the thistle of, of showing some of my work publicly. And it's time that we remember to use all the compliments that we get with our art, our, our photography, as, as an armor of sorts, as, as a plate that we can build up around ourselves to say, yes, do you know what, there will be people who this is not for you, this is not for you, and we can say, well, I'm, I didn't make it for you, but rather than hiding behind that as our shield from the world and, and, and being hidden from the world, we can then wear instead all of these, these compliments and say, well, you know, you may think that, but all these other people, they don't. They say that I like what you create. I like the photography that you have made. And that's okay because that's how the cookie crumbles. It's not a perfect solution. It's not that it's not going to make you super 100% confident and super 100% brave in your creative journey. But it's going to help. It's going to help to remind you that everybody, all of us, me, you, everybody else who watches these these videos, struggles with these concepts from time to time, that anybody who says that they're 100% always confident and always brave and does not care one iota about their photography, about what the public think, is, is probably lying. Usually at the end of a video, I will go, hey, you know, watch this video, yada, yada, yada. But I just wanted to say, because this is, this is a, a thing, and I, I think this is, has been a heart and sleeve moment, that I deeply appreciate everybody who watches the channel, everybody who, who comments, or, or doesn't comment, it, it, just, you're just watching the channel. It's all of these things, these little increments have given me some armor now to be able to be more open, to be able to be more confident in, in front of this camera that, uh, you know, and you, because I'm talking to you right now, and less worried about what other people say, the negative comments, because 
very early on at the beginning of, of this channel, when we when I was at the birth of the channel, about maybe five videos in, there was a gentleman who said in the comment, and they were long, lengthy comments about how I was peddling nonsense and being uh, one of the, the horde of idiots on YouTube, not knowing what they were talking about. And, and that was hurtful at the time. It was extremely hurtful to hear all this and to, to, you know, to, to read those, those comments. And I could have given up. I was very close to, to, stopping, to, to stopping the channel then. And, and if I had have done that, then, well, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be here being able to talk to you today. So that's a very long-winded way of saying I, I really appreciate you watching the channel. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you know, the, 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 everything that you offer me, both you know, from, a, from a commenting point of view or just, just simply watching. It's wonderful to have you here, and and I just you know I just want to say thank you. <laughs>